Hi everyone. In today's video, I will cover how I use columnar layout with a baseline grid. I use this approach with columnar and baseline grids in probably about 90% of all my layout projects. Um, there may be other approaches, but this has worked uh, for me time and time and again. So in our last exercise, I had you create a layout using a geometric shape uh, in Adobe Illustrator so that the text area uh, relates to the overall page proportions. Um, the details of the exercise can be found below. Um, and I'll probably upload a video of this in the near future. Um, so now I'll guide you how I translate this layout to InDesign uh, with a baseline grid. So first I'm going to copy this uh, graphic into Illustrator and place it into InDesign. So just copy that and then I'm just going to go to InDesign and then I'll paste um, my document here. So before I make a paste it in i'll have to create a new document um, and i want to use a half letter because i want to make um i want to make a zine or um a small a small publication so i'm going to click on letter half here and then um for international sizes it would probably be about an a5 so i'm going to hit create and then here we have it and before we start there, I'm just going to make sure my rulers and my control panel are on. So it's just this and this. Um, if you don't see them, they will be up in uh, here, up in the window in your menu bar. Uh, just have control. So you want to just have that on. And you also want your rulers on. So right here and then the rulers. All right. So um, I'm for now going to just change my uh, units to inches because I'm in Canada and uh, we're a little bit strange like that. So I'll just click that there. Uh, and this will just give me a better uh, idea of my page size. So now I'm going to go to my master page and paste the shape in. Just like that. And I'm just going to now uh, scale and fit it with the page. So remember to hold shift while you're scaling it um, to keep everything in proportion. Uh, you don't want to stretch it or else you just kind of lose the whole idea of the proportion. So remember to hold shift and then um, try to get as close as you can. Um, yeah, just like that. I think that looks good. Um, and then now I will adjust the page size uh, with the page tool right up here um, in the toolbar. Um, so you can, and then uh, with the control panel, you can get a, uh, a better idea of sort of the page size numbers. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about the uh, page sizes here because um, printers can usually print with uh, cut crop within one millimeters. And it's uh, in graphic design, proportions are often more important than having clean and convenient numbers. So. Uh, with that in mind, um, this is the, the inches is just to give me an overall idea in case it just matches up. Otherwise, it's not such a big deal. Um, and yes, before we change the page size, we want to have both our masters selected, just like that. And then um, the page tool doesn't work too well if you just scroll it like this. You'll see that it always pops back up. So what we'll do is we will just go into the control panel and then we'll just hit um, nudge it downwards. So just like that. Um, so yeah, 6.875 looks really good. So I'm going to leave it at that and, and, uh, and leave it at that. So that looks perfect. All right, so now uh, we can go and adjust the margins. So uh, make sure that both our uh, master pages are selected. And before we do that, I'm also going, before we change our margins, I'm going to change these back into points just to give me finer control when I'm adjusting margins, uh, which you'll see uh, right away. So again, select both of our spreads. And now let's go to layout and margins in our menu bar. And now we'll adjust the margins to match the text area in our layout. So let's just scroll up and down. Uh, make sure these are all unlinked uh, because we have separate um, uh, proportions, um, separate different sizes for each, and it's not centered in the page. So yeah, so you can see by points, it gives us a uh, really fine control. So it just kind of nudge it down until it matches, just like that, so 68. Uh, and the inside, uh, we'll make that a little bit bigger. So there we go. And we'll just measure that in as well. 
uh, the outer margin. So that looks great. All right, so now let's delete the uh, graphic and then just take a look at our overall layout. And that looks really nice if we're aiming for like a nice symmetrical uh, layout. But if we want to make um, an asymmetrical layout uh, to give it a more contemporary feeling, I will select my right master page and adjust the margins by flipping around the inner and outer margin values. So I'll select this one right here. And then I'll just go back to layout, margins, and columns. And then I'm just going to uh, flip these numbers around. So we have 29, 55. Uh, so we'll just go 55 and 29. Just like that. So now we have a really interesting, uh, very horizontally motion kind of layout with the inner margin becoming the outer margin and uh, vice versa. So that looks great. So now uh, let's talk about the baseline. So also, if we want to, we can um, uh, add some columns to here as well. So um, we can make sure that we select both of these. Layout, um, margins, columns, just like that, columns two. And I guess I would have to replace this back end because I forgot to do so. So just give me one sec and I'll just do that really quickly. Oops. Just like that. And then we'll place, um, and then we'll just place our column width right there. So what we can do is we just have to go into grids and guides if we want to move columns, and then click off lock column guides, and then we can just move them to where we need those to be. Um, and ditto, we can do the same on this page as well. If you want to have um, asymmetrical margins, so just like that, and yeah, that looks great. All right, so let's. Oops, my bad. I put it on the wrong one. So uh, let's just do that again. Right here. And voila. So that looks great. We have a, um, hmm, it doesn't look perfectly uh, matched, but um, we can fix this later to um, for now. Yeah, it looks good enough for now. Um, I will just leave this for now. And then we'll use that. So now let's add the baseline grid. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to lock my guides again. And then I'm just going to fill in the, uh, I'm just going to fill in uh, my text area with some placeholder text. So just like that. And then, and then from there, I'm just going to design the text uh, to, to get the right feeling for um, just the overall layout of my body copy. So uh, I've said it before, uh, but for me, line spacing is a heartbeat of layout. So it's really important to consider the feeling of the text and the line spacing and not just kind of go with the default value. Also, um, some typefaces mean more letting than others. So I'm going to go, since it's a really small booklet, I'm going to go with a smaller text. And I'm also going to use a condensed typeface. And uh, this uh, condensed typefaces do well with a little bit more letting. So let me just change that. And you may have already decided this uh, uh, before. So I'm just going to open my text, um, my, text, uh, my text panel. And I'll just change it to, I'll just say to, um, I really like Roboto Condense. So maybe we'll just use that. And then uh, 12 is quite big. So I'm just going to, it's a small book. So I'll just make it 10. And then maybe with the letting, I want it to be a little wider. So let's just say 10 and on 13. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then you can fill it with a uh, more placeholder text and then that'll do it. And then you can even just copy it over and then just kind of take a look at what it'll look like on your page, which looks pretty good. So I'm going to stay with that. All right. So now that we know our baseline, uh, our letting, which is 13, 13 points, we can now change that in, change our baseline grid. So we have to go to, uh, preferences, um, in under um, in the InDesign menu, or it would be in Edit on a PC. So we're going to go to Preferences, Grids. And then I'm just going to change the values around. So firstly, we're going to change the start value to 0. Uh, it may just makes things more clean overall. Uh, if you have a specific reason not to start at 0, that's fine. But if you're unsure, uh, 0 is your best bet. So next is quite important. Uh, I will change the relative to from top of page to top margin. 
Uh, this will make your layout grids clean and tie everything together. Again, make sure to do this unless you have really specific reasons not to. So top margin again, um, relative to top margin and start at zero. And honestly, I really think that top of margin start of zero should really be the default in my mind. So now that we also know our base, uh, our body copy line spacing, we'll set this to 13 point, just like that. And then the view threshold is just how, um, right now we're at 75%, so we would be able to see, it, uh, see the baseline grid there. If you wanted to see it at like say 50%, uh, you can change it to there. And generally I like to keep this unchecked uh, because I like to see my grids and not have it blocked by other elements like photos or other text and shapes. All right, so let's click OK and take a look. So of course, to, to take a look, we're going to have to go to View, Grids, and make sure that baseline grid is on. So yeah, you can see that looks really great. And then we can either adjust these ones to fit in the baseline, or we'll talk about paragraph styles and everything later to make it um, uh, so that it can fit with snap to the baseline grid. All right, so if you feel inclined, uh, you can adjust the margins to better fit the baseline. So you can kind of see it right off here. It fits pretty well, but uh, we can kind of adjust it just slightly uh, just to make it match up really nicely. So we'll just go to our bottom margin and then we'll just uh, uh, nudge it um, down and that's perfect. So we'll hit OK. So now we have a very beautiful uh, columnar grid and baseline grid. So that's that. Um, I hope you found that helpful and and um, let me know if you have any questions or comments in my next video. All right, thanks everyone.